So if you think about it, right? So just imagine you're 70 and you're already hatching plots out to kill police. So you're on your estate trying to actually recall police onto our estate. Can we do this and can we do that to them? This is 17, 18, 19. You know, so by the time I'm 23, I'm proper plotting. Let's see if we can get a plot card onto our estate and with every cunt that's in it. They got on it. The police got on it. They got himself from somewhere and he didn't move to us and he threatened us. Threatened us, mate. Honest, I'm mate. Busy's kicked doors off as soon as they found out what was getting spoken about and told us straight, listen, <laughs> any more talk like that, you're done. That's what they told us, straight up, not lying to us. But then you, you're plotting, so just say you're 19 and you're plotting on that family, like I've been plotting on the moors since everything. Still right through me jail, right now, I'm still plotting on that moor family. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just imagine in 2010, no, say 24, 25, I'm plotting, even when I'm in jail. Plans are already hatched. So you can imagine it 20 years later, that plan that was started in 24. You can imagine how refined it is, can't you? You know, I've had 20 years going over this plan, refining it, rejigging it so it's smooth. No hiccups. And I've went through all sorts of situations, all sorts of madness that could happen. Da, 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 da. Got to the point, and th I thought to myself, I've been planning like a crazy strategist, like a tactician, for years on this thing. And then at the end of it all, I come to the conclusion that you don't need a plan for an end game. You just need a destination to end it. That's all it is, the end game. Now, if it's not the end game and you're making a plan, well, you've got to be more efficient because you want to get away. So you've got to plan it, every detail. You need to get away with this. You can't be getting a 35 rec, 40 rec, natural life sentence. Do you understand what I'm saying? When it's an end game, you don't need no plan. You just need a destination and the weapons. That's all you need, basically. There's no tunes on tonight, fella. Shout out to Belfast. Yes, the pharmacist. Chuck, hope you're good. Stephen. And that's what I'm saying. When, you, when you're when you going for the end game, what do I mean, end game? Unliving yourself at the end of it. You don't need no plan. You just need a place. And that place can be that gym. That place can be Team Colburn. Do you understand? Walk into Team Colburn one morning, put them all to bed, let the police come, let them put you to bed. Happy in days, isn't it? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Of course you do. And they do as well. Let's look at this Declan Cooper, fat blurt who catches fish. And what are you saying, Declan Cooper, you fat blurt? Let's see what you're saying. Is your brother in your attic? Is your ma still smoking crack, lad? Hey, you little woolly bach. Is your ma still a punter? Hey? Did it do? Go on, go on at the snitch button, Declan Cooper, lad. Yes, you're busy. Chuck. Jackie. <laughs> Michelle. Um, ba -da -ba -um, ba -da -ba -um. West of Ireland, la. Good on you, the tribesman. Got pure Irish in it, la. Good. I think this is one, pla one, one profile where, regardless of where you are in Ireland, you're invited. You're welcome. And everyone that's in here from Ireland should welcome each other. I know you might have deep ingrained division there. That the government's forced on you. Like they do with us fall. 
How are you, Natalie, mate? Up the Irish say shim busy. Yes, Dylan. Frantic fingers. Mm. Now, Denla, 0151. Good on you, lad. You been writing any tunes? I've started two, lad, but I just put them down. Just can't be asked. I'm not focused, am I, mate? Well, I'm focused, but I'm focused on something I shouldn't be. Like I've just explained. Mad, mate, honest to God. I'm seeking help. Got an appointment on the 17th of July. Which should have happened last June. Not the June just gone, the one before. We've got adjourned. So I've got an appointment with a mental health team and I've been under this mental health team for the past three years, basically. Well, two years. And I'm meant to get this assessment, but you just keep on up, so what can you do? It's like the system's geared me up for this sort of behaviour. It's like that's what they were doing to me, you know, psychologically doing this to me. But they weren't expecting me to switch it towards organised crime groups, I don't think. I think they were expecting me to get out and just be a lone wolf and do madness like them on London Bridge and these kids that you see doing scatty shit. We've all got one thing in common. We've all just got out of prison and we're all dealing with getting into society very hard. And I think that's what they wanted me to be, be like, one of them, a lone wolf. Because I'm a lone wolf. I am a lone wolf. Well, I'm not a lone wolf. I'm a lone man. I'm not an animal. Well, I hope I'm not an animal. But you understand what I'm saying, don't you? How do you want me to think? For you that have known me, you've known how much pressure the system's had me under since a child. And you've seen, since me release, how much interaction they're having with me in an attempt to arrest me for something or charge me with anything they can, anything. Do you think I'm gonna go into my 50s getting tethered off Merseyside, please? Do you? Come on, have a think about it, mate. Do you think I'm gonna let Merseyside police destroy any more of my life? They've destroyed it. Merseyside police have ruined me since I was a child. Dave Dahl and the nonce. No one likes to believe what I'm saying, but they can't disprove what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, mate? No, oh, he's lying, he's lying, he's lying. Disprove what I'm saying. Don't come out with some little crackhead from 20 years ago trying to disprove it. If you're running around saying I'm chatting shit, prove that I'm lying. You can't. Even though you've tried, you've had just I've been on social media for eight years now and I've done 21, 22 podcasts and everything I've said in them podcasts you have had little wormy weirdos trying to discredit it and you can't there's always someone to confirm what I'm saying mate, always hey, oh, 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 oh. Come back, get out of here. Can't stand dirty for like him, you know. Come in praying on birds and shit, you know, just like harassing birds and that. Scumbags, mate. You, you ever been sectioned? They can only section you when you have an episode within the community, mate. Other than that, they can't section you, lad. Unless you sign. Unless you sign yourself away. Ford Rally, there's nobody qualified enough to help you. I know. 
No one with any sort of qualification can help me, only I can help myself. You've just got to go through the process. You know, paper chase, someone's going to be held responsible for my demise. So, I've been into, into five different hospitals up and down the country where I've walked into the A&E and said to them, listen mate, I've got these mad feelings going through my head and I'm shit scared I'm going to carry them out. Can you help me? You know what they say? I'll ring this number and chase you. And it's all documented, because you know what I say before I leave? Can you make a report about me coming into this hospital? And I make them make the report. So when shit does hit the fan, and they go back and look at what the happened, because there'll be a tribunal, you know, there'll be an in-depth investigation of what happened to Dad and G, and how did he go out like that, and why? And what they'll see is that official that official, that official, that official, that official, all f***ed up in their job, sacked. Do you understand what I'm saying? There'll be loads of people held responsible for the atrocity I create in 10 or 20 years. Loads. Look at me. I'm preaching it to you is what I'm going to do in 10 and 20 years. Is anyone taking it serious? I've gone into all the right establishments, all the right institutions, Saying exactly what I've just said to all yous. Have you done anything about it? Why haven't you done anything about it? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So for example, I'm in prison. And I've got a year left. And I've got probation, outside probation, sitting in a room with me. And I've told them straight, what you're looking at is a Christian version of G.I.D. John. told them to the faces what have they done about it nothing and I've told them to the faces and it's all documented everything you say to them regardless of where it is it's documented any agent to the government everything you say is documented you go in the doctors how are you feeling today I'm feeling it's all documented you go into anywhere do you understand? You'll notice it now because I've highlighted it here. But every agent of the government, regardless of who it is, you'll hear them tapping away, whether you're phoning a phone line, whether you're going into an office, an institution, they ask you questions, the first thing they're doing is recording it. All of it. So everything that's come out of my mouth in that system since I've been in it is recorded. So when I'm on the wing and you call them personal officers, and you think these personal officers are there to help you in your rehabilitation, when reality, that personal officer's duty is to write up on you every single day. Your personal officer will come on your wing, come and stand with you for a little bit. What's happening, lad? And off and do a two-page report on you. Who you standing with, what your attitude's like, how you're coming across. You don't see it all. If you're my level, you don't get to see it all. It's all behind the scenes, paperwork, map boards and all this. <coughs> but that's what happens, people. So when I'm screaming this for years, you know, you've seen, I don't need to go on about it. It is what it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? They want this. I want it. I want it. Twelve years I've got to wait. Twelve years I'm waiting for you, Willie Moore. You and your whole family I'm coming for, mate. Can't wait. Na, 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 na. 
So what's your mindset now? What are you planning to do? Says math. Don't worry about it, kid. The process you have to go through for help is disgusting, says Lisa. They don't want to help. Yes, frantic fingers. It doesn't matter what they do for me. I know my end game. And no one's going to change it for me. No one. Obviously, if they come round and shoot me dead, well, that's what it is. It's gone. It's over. But, if I can help it, I'm getting to my end game. And it's not going to fault. It's going to go out. God, mate, you need to get with the programme. Is it worth it though? What's points? Ali Mach, what, what do you mean? What's the point? The point is, an 18 year old kid had his life taken from him and I can't get over it. And instead of harming myself psychologically about it, I've chose to harm others over it. Now I'm not going to harm others right now because I don't have to. But I can sit here for a decade or just over and wait, because that's the way I am. Calm, sinister, with a high perpetuance for violence. I'm basically living up to what they want me to be. Man, you know the script, the wrong people get it, lad. Ali Mach, you're no God, can't make that decision. Ali Mach, you're no God. You can't tell me what I can do and what I can't do. I'll be judged. It's only one person that can judge me and it's definitely not a fat blonde bird who snorts oak like you. Alright, sticky chops. Fucking <coughs> kippy, you girl. Got a fodder like a wet box. Get out of my life. Dun, 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 dun.